Rosa Parks and Harriet Tubman are probably two of the most famous black female figures in history. Hi, this is Steve from College Express. Today, we're going to be looking at five other inspiring black female figures. Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler first found her love for caring for people as she grew up watching her aunt provide care for the sick. Wanting to follow in her footsteps, Rebecca became a nurse after graduating from West Newton English and Classical School in Massachusetts. She would then go on to attend New England Female Medical College, and in 1964, she would graduate from this college and effectively become the first black female physician in the United States. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Shirley Chisholm attended and graduated cum laude from Brooklyn College in 1946. Her fear that her gender and her race created a double handicap for her also drove her to join local chapters of the League of Women's Voters, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, the Urban League, and the Democratic Party Club of Brooklyn. In 1964, Shirley ran and won a seat on the New York State Legislature and became the second black American to do so. Just four years later in 1968, Shirley ran and won a seat on Congress, becoming the first black congresswoman, where she used her position to fight for gender and racial equality, as well as impoverished people and an end to the Vietnam War. In 1972, Shirley also became the first woman and first black American to run for president for one of the two major political parties, the Democratic Party. To wrap up her illustrious political career, Shirley became the first black woman and second woman ever in 1977 to serve on the powerful House Rules Committee. Graduating from New York University with a Bachelor's of Science in Education and a Master's in Educational Psychology, Dorothy Height went on to become an activist who championed black and women's rights. In doing so, she was hailed as the godmother of the women's movement while holding a leadership position in the Young Women's Christian Association and as acting president of the National Council of Negro Women for over 40 years. She used her position to coordinate what is now called Wednesdays in Mississippi, an open forum for both black and white women to discuss race and social justice. In 1963, she helped organize the March on Washington and was also one of the few women present for Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Over the course of her lifetime and because of her incredible work and dedication, Dorothy received three prestigious awards from different U.S. presidents. Starting in 1944 with President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, she was awarded the Freedom from Want Award. In 1989, President Ronald Reagan awarded her the Citizens Medal Award for Distinguished Service. And in 2000, President George W. Bush presented her with the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. After just one semester of college, Bessie Coleman moved to Chicago in 1915 and found her love for flying and wanting to become a pilot. But she was faced with a lot of racist pilots at the time, and it wasn't until she met a man by the name of Robert Abbott who championed her dream of becoming a pilot and told her to go to France. But not only did he do that, he paid for her way to France, where she attended the school École d'Aviation des Frères Codron et Le Courtois where in 1921 she would go on to earn her international pilot's license and become the first American to, of any race or gender to be awarded the credentials from the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale and was given the name Queen Bessie by the Chicago Defender who also promoted her as the only black aviatrix in the world. The tragic death of Daisy Bates' mother after she was murdered by three white men is what ultimately drove her to dedicate her life to champion for racial equality. When she moved to Little Rock, Arkansas with her husband, they started a newspaper called the Arkansas Weekly. And she used this paper after 1954 to call out schools that were not following the federal mandate that segregated schools were unconstitutional. During this time, she was also the acting president of the Arkansas chapter for the NAACP. Daisy Bates would go on to use this newspaper to help select nine students to integrate into the Central High School in Little Rock in 1957, also known as the Little Rock Nine. 
and she became a pivotal role for these students in their protection and success in school. Later on, she would go on to write a book about these experiences called The Long Shadow of Little Rock, which would go on to win an American Book Award. If you like this video, make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell button if you want to know when the next video goes live for a notification.